welcome back, everybody, to the Bucks Playing Podcast. And uh, we have uh, something a little special for you guys today. It's something I've never done before. I've always wanted to do it. I've never done it before. So I did a film analysis on quarterback Kyle Trask. It took me a while, a lot of hours, a lot of hours. And I got the plays I wanted to use. I talked over them. I gave my opinion, again, this is opinion, not blatantly fact, not a quarterback analysis, you know, professional. This is what I think from what I've heard and what I've heard, you know, other guys say and what I've just kind of noticed on film over the years with our quarterbacks and, you know, but just kind of my overall knowledge of it. Um, and I think it's something that, like, I'm going to continue to do, especially with the Bucks, uh during the season and not just focus on specific positions and stuff like I did in this video. So I think that would be really fun. I think I would be really good at that. If I was just analyzing Bucks film against players, against, you know, teams and in game, I think I'd be really good at that. Um and so and I think I did a pretty good job at this. Y'all obviously y'all you guys are gonna let me know whether it was good or not. So um yeah so enjoy this one and I will see you guys in the film room right now. So Let's just get into it. Now, j just to preface, just before we even get started, and I don't even know this, this is probably the first play I show, because um, I'm recording all of this completely out of order, but whatever, and it's taking me multiple days, multiple weeks to do it, but whatever, and, you know, I'm not a professional quarterback coach or guru, but I do watch a lot of film. I watch a lot of film, and I do have opinions, and I think I'm at least, I think I have a, enough credibility to where I at least can make this video offer some insight about things and it be a valid point. I, I think I at least can do that. You know, I get help from watching other people too. And then I kind of just add my own opinions in there. And on top of what they say on top of the film that they they could be potentially looking at. Um, but here we go. So what's my main issue with Kyle Trask? It's actually not his, his speed. A lot of people are like, Oh, well, he's not fast. And look, there'll be plenty of plays. I'm sure. It's the first play I'm recording, so I'm sure I'm going to get into more about why the speed thing I think is overrated. Um, but my main issue is his throwing motion. Now, I don't know why this isn't a huge deal for a lot of teams in the NFL. It's, I, it's, it's probably because, you know, there's a lot of guys with a lot of weird throwing motions like you know, Mahomes, Josh Allen kind of has a weird one, uh, you know, and then obviously infamously Phillip Rivers is the weirdest throwing motion ever. But I still, but all of those guys, it, it works for them. So it's kind of like to each their own with the throwing motion. But I think it's, you know, I still think it's pretty important because the issue with Kyle Trask is arm strength, right? That's one of the main issues. And again, I've said this before, it's not how far you can throw a ball. Okay, that's not what arm strength is. It's how fast can you throw one? How quickly can you get one into a tight window? That's what arm strength is. Okay, and here's where, because if you look at his highlights, this guy can throw, this, this boy right here, Kyle Trask can throw 50, maybe 60 yards. He could do it. But can he throw the football fast and in tight windows? That's where we come into some issues. So here's a really good example of a time where his throwing motion really hinders him from getting the ball to this out route on this play. So as you'll see here, we're just watching in real time. He takes a very long time to wind up and throw, and it actually cost him on this out route here. So let's just go ahead and, you know, you can watch it in real time here. So as you see, the th it just takes too long. You know, by the time this ball gets to him, it's it's really too late. This ball really needs to be hitting him probably around here. This is where the ball probably needs to be. It's a little too late. And, th again, this isn't a huge deal in the, at the college level because you're looking at this, well, I mean, it, it was a pretty accurate throw. It kind of looks like the defender made a good play. Um, but if you're really looking at this, you know, at the NFL level, this th th this this is just not really acceptable. I mean, this is probably a house call, especially if it's this, uh, it takes this long to get out because those corners, they jump. They jump in the NFL. They don't do it as much in college. They, they all can jump in the NFL. They can jump those routes. And, again, so if you look at his throwing motion slowly, you'll see what his main issue is. So, now, mechanically, it looks not that bad because, look, I mean, he's got his feet lined up, his hips, you know, they're where you want him. He's not pigeon-toeing. His foot is, you know, facing kind of where you want it to, um, facing the receiver. You know, pigeon-toeing is when your foot's just kind of everywhere. It causes you to have a couple inaccurate throws, which it kind of does with him too sometimes, but not particularly on this play. So he sets his feet, 
he lines up his shoulder with where he's throwing, and you'll see his arms, nice wingspan point to where it is. But here's the problem. He goes way, in my opinion, way too deep on this, on where he places the ball. I mean, he re that, that's pretty far out there when throwing the ball, when he does that. And that just one second right there is the difference between a completion and an incompletion, possibly a pick six in the NFL. College not a huge deal. I think it will be in the NFL. Again, right there. It's a little too long. It's it looks pretty, but the more you, you kind of look at it, it's it's just too long of a process. Guys like Kellen Mond, Zach Wilson, some of these guys, they throw the ball so quickly. It it doesn't look like this. They get it out really quickly, and this is again part of the issue. With his arm strength, it takes way too long, so throws are often, especially on out routes, you have to be quick. It's not there in time. And, you know, to compare, we're going to compare him to this other quarterback that we're all familiar with named Tom Brady. And, yes, yes, I did. I got film from when he was at Michigan just to compare how he was in college. So Tom Brady, his – this is kind of the opposite of trash. Tom Brady's throwing motion was completely overlooked. So if you look here – Look how fast, we'll just watch in real time first. Watch how fast he gets that ball out. I mean, that's like a lightning quick. Now, obviously, the fumble goes out of bounds, doesn't matter. Um, but, you know, there's some pressure here. I mean, the you know the running back blocks that guy, but he's kind of on the ground rolling towards Brady. I mean, that's, you know, again, not the perfect pocket. And uh, just look at how fast this ball goes out, especially in slow motion compared to Trask. Now, if you... It might not be super noticeable if you slow it down really far, but if you just look at real time, boom versus. I probably should have this set up already. Boom! It that just a half a second, it does make a difference. Brady can zip the ball in a lot better than Tras, and he did it a lot better in college. Now I think this actually will help Kyle Tras because of the fact that you know Tom Brady's going to be his mentor. Tom Brady can teach him these things. How to throw a ball that quickly and zip one in that fast versus, you know, where he's kind of at right now. With this long, overextended throwing motion. So that's just kind of one example of that play. Here we have another play here where that we're going to talk about his throwing motion and some of the Sometimes poor decisions that Kyle Trask makes when he predetermines the throw. And so let's go ahead and pull up this play here. And again, I, this is the worst throw from his career. So I understand you're back. Oh, of course, you pull up the literal worst throw of his entire career. But, I mean, again, we have, we're going to show all different kinds of plays. This is one of them. And now this gets called back as of a penalty. So this, this does not show up in the stat sheet. The worst throw of his career does not even show up in the stat sheet, but that doesn't mean it's not important to note of how bad of a decision it was and how bad of a throw it, it was. So let's go ahead and watch it in real time. And oh, I forgot to mute the video. There we go. So here we go. Look, he drops back and throws an air ball into triple coverage. This is, uh, I mean, come on. This is easily the worst throw of his career. I mean, the safety can fair catch this ball. I mean, that's how criminally underthrown this is. But let's let's talk about more in depth why this happened. It's not just because he decided to throw an air ball. That's, that's obviously not why. So I want to highlight something first, okay, again, about his throwing motion, because I think this is another really good example of it uh, hurting him. So if you see here, and we're going to look, we're going to look, we're going to look, 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 he's backpedaling. Pause right there. Okay. So, what do we see here? Right? Why do I keep complaining about his throwing motion? Look at where the ball is in his hand. It fa it's facing away from him. Okay, now think about when you throw a football. Now, I'm not skilled enough to edit myself now showing a normal throwing motion. But normally when you're throwing the ball, you have it facing forwards, right? You don't have it facing outwards. Because if you have it facing outwards like this, instead of maybe having the ball facing the other direction, so facing this way, because so, the ball's facing here. Right? We see that. If the ball's maybe facing the other way, like normal uh, throwing motions where it's kind of facing like here or it's in front of them, you can get the ball out quicker. It's not as much of a wind-up because you don't have to all wind your wrist all the way around. Right? It makes your throwing motion longer. By 
you know, it might not seem like that much longer, but it makes a difference. Having the ball out here like this is, I think, not good in the NFL. Now, a couple guys have done it before, um, and it worked okay. I saw one guy say that this throwing motion right here is the same one that Randall Cunningham had. And obviously, Randall Cunningham was a good NFL quarterback, but that was pretty much a one-time example. So, again, I, I don't personally like this. I think it takes too long. And I think Brady, honestly, will help him fix this. Because, again, look, the ball's facing out. And, you know, it's under throw. Now, either way, this is a bad decision, so the throwing can't really help it. But I will say this. If you look at when he decides to throw this ball, right? So, I guess we have to go to slow motion. All right, so here we go. And he's throwing it, like, here is pretty much where he says pull the trigger. This is a messy pocket, right? Now, this guard is completely holding. This should have been a holding penalty on Florida. Um, so, there's a lot of things happening. But when he's deciding to throw this ball, the, this pocket is not awful. This is, this is you know, pressure. Pressure, right? It's pressure. But it's not horrendous. It's not a horrendous pocket, but because the fact that the ball's facing out, he has to wind his wrist all the way around. Now, by the time he's throwing the ball, he's got guys basically in his face touching him, affecting the throw. And, you know, he's backpedaling too, which obviously hurts the momentum for an already not as talented arm as we've seen before. And so by the time, again, this ball actually gets out, these defenders are impacting the pass. And then, again, the decision was absolutely horrendous. Now, let's let's start to get into that. So this is obviously an example of a predetermined throw, which is not good. You don't want a predetermined throw. Jameis did it all the time. It's pretty much what cost him his job in Tampa. And, you know, Kyle tries to do it a ton, but I think it's there enough to where it's at least something to keep an eye on. And here's a good example of it. I mean, he pretty much, I mean, look at his play from the beginning to end. Does he even move his eyes? Well, he does kind of. He looks again to to the to this guy at the bottom right hand of your screen. He's getting jammed pretty good. He's trying to move in his eyes, but he's pretty much looking. I mean, for how many seconds is he looking at this guy? I mean, that, that, that that's just bait. That That's just candy to his safety right there. How long he locked those eyes in there. I mean, no wonder there's three guys right there. Right, you stare at a guy down for that long, it tells the whole defense where you're going, and you can see that it's evident. By the way, there's three defenders right there. Now, let's look at this from another angle. So, if you look at it from here, it's kind of confusing. Why was there three guys there? Okay, there's two safeties on the field, right? So, one traditionally is going to cover this zone. The guy's got this zone, the corners, or whatever. Now, here's the thing though that really I don't think Kyle Trask saw. And that might have been because of the pressure or backpedaling, or he just was like, you know what, we're throwing it to you know our first round, first round, first round draft pick at Aries Tony there. And you know, here we go again. If you see here, this safety right number nine, right? I think that's his number. Well, yeah, I think that's number nine. So the safety right here, his job is to cover this area of the field, right? Help out this corner right here on this receiver. Now, this corner gets a pretty good jam of this receiver right here. Pretty good jam. So, that, that's pretty good coverage right there. So, this safety is not really threatened by that. So, he's not really paying attention, which Kyle Trask doesn't, I don't think, sees. I think he sees the two safeties and thinks, well, okay, well, one guy's going to have to be over here. Another's over here. And then we have this, and then, you know, the corner on Kadarius Tony, who's going to end up being, you know, a slot corner. So, that's a mismatch for us, right? That's... That's what we're looking for. We can get, you know, Kadarius Tony maybe blow by these two guys, and you can kind of argue that he did. I mean, let's look here. You know, if this ball is really, 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 really far out there and hits him in stride, this this could be a completion. But here's the issue. Because of the fact that this safety is not really threatened by this receiver because the corner gets pretty good press, it then gives him the free ability to just purely read the quarterback's eyes. And as you can see, he tries to look him off, but then he comes back over here. And then immediately, you see number nine sprint all the way down there. And he's the one who ends up getting the pick. I can't show the full play, but he ends up getting the interception on this play. It's just a poor... There's, this is the worst play of his career. I mean, it was a bad decision. Um, I think... Don't really think he read the defense correctly. And he, he kind of is open, if we're being honest. This is kind of open right here. 
again, but when the ball is, I mean, look at it. Look at the ball. It's facing away. It's not an ideal, in my opinion, NFL throwing motion. This, this is this is trouble right here. And I thought, you know, the Bucks were maybe going to lean towards a guy who had a better throwing motion and just had a really overall better arm talent than Trask. But this is who we got, and I'm just explaining my my thought process on why. Just that now, now, I mean, he's on the team now, so I obviously like him. But I'm I'm just explaining my thought process of why I don't think this is why I did not agree with the pick here. So there's that. And then if we want to look at it one more time, see what Kyle Trask actually saw on the play. Kind of see here. So we'll go back to the beginning. So, I mean, look, you know, backpedaling, backpedaling, ball thrown, and, you know, this is just not open, right? Not open. Um, now, And, again, you can see the hold. This, this is clearly a hold that should have been called on Florida which would have negated both penalties and still not been an interception because it would have been a redo of downs, but I'm, I'm just making a, you know, making a point here about that. Look, that's not what they're looking for. And you can kind of see too, again, from this angle of the storing motion, I was kind of talking about this for a while now, but the ball is way out there. Josh McCown kind of has a similar philosophy. And he fumbled a ton in the NFL, especially when he played with the Bucks that one year. And he's his feet aren't really set super well. It was just an off balance, weird. The throw took way too long. That's honestly why the throw motion taking too long is why I think the pressure really got to him and why he ended up under throwing this ball on top of the fact that he didn't really read the defense and safeties correctly. Um, so that's again concerning about Kyle. This is the last play from the Texas A&M game. I know. I know. It's like, you're probably thinking, well, Will, it's like you only watch Texas A&M game. I just think it was a good, a really good, well-rounded game of him being really bad and then really good at the same time. So it's just kind of an easy, you know, comparison in the same game. <laughs> Instead of having, you know, jumping around from game to game, it's just a little bit easier to make. Um, because every all the, all the bad things I showed that were from this game, that was pretty much, you know, all of his bad tendencies in every game, but they all showed up in this game. Because this was, again, probably his worst game. But he also had some really good throws. And this is going to be one of them. This is directly, directly after the interception that he threw right around here, right? The, the, the horrible pick he threw. This is the same drive, right? And you can see what he does. He takes advantage of, because, you know, those penalties should have offset because there should have been a holding on Florida too. But they only called the holding on Texas A&M. And, you know, to his credit, takes advantage of it. Let's, let's look. Um... If he throws it downfield and again wide open, <clears throat> or yeah, why it was you know oh, not yeah it was pretty wide open, good throw, and right on the money. I mean I don't even think he has to stop because Canary's Tony of course. Yeah, I mean he doesn't even really stop or slow down at all. This is a great throw, and again, you know, just just one last time with this throwing motion again. The ball, obviously, when you throw a, a football, right, it, it does turn that way um, when you throw it, no matter who you are. But I just think my argument is that it's too exaggerated on him. It's He does it way too far back to where it slows down his throwing motion. That's my problem with it. Not that it's turned around backwards at all. I think it's just a, too far back. Um, I know that sounds like kind of contradicting myself, but I, 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 just, I think I kind of just explained it wrong. Um I think the issue is this is the ball's facing backwards and it's way, way too far out there, causing him to really, you know, almost wind up like a pitcher. But again, this is a great throw. And it shows, well, Will, it looks like his arm strength is fine. He just threw a 40-yarder. And again, the, he has really good touch. It's when he has to throw a bullet pass. That's when the arm strength is really kind of questionable, in my opinion. And so moving off, I know you guys can celebrate. Moving off of that game, um... I can look at this, the South Carolina game. And here's the thing that I actually like the most about Kyle Trask. This is the thing that I think he does best, and it kind of just destroys the entire narrative of him being super immobile is because I think he has great pocket presence. And look, you can just look at this play. We'll watch it, you know, like we do all the way through first, and you'll see defensive end comes up. He steps up in the pocket, rolls right, sets his feet, throws backwards. Again, this is, you know... 
We'll be able to do this in the NFL where you kind of throw, you know, slide right and then step and throw back. You know, probably not, but uh, this is just this is a great throw and it's great awareness too because there's an instinct that quarterbacks either have or they don't of when the pressure is coming, right? Like Josh Rosen did not have this instinct. That's why he was a bust. Kyle Trask has this instinct. This is something that I think is really crucial to his game and his ability to be an or a, you know a second round you know sec, he's a second round pick. I mean that's a pretty high pick, and I think this is the best part of his game. I mean you know he he senses the pressure because again, the quarterback doesn't really have time to actually just look at his offensive line and say oh well this guy's coming so I'm going to go but if, you know what you have to keep your eyes downfield. He does that and he senses the pressure, and he slides up. Goes right. I mean, this is. I don't really understand. Oh, he's not mobile. He's not mobile. What is this then? Huh? I mean, you know, Brady would probably have trouble making this move. Maybe not really, but if he's as slow as the media says he is, I didn't think he could walk faster than, you know, two miles an hour. But, you know, here we have this. And I think nobody talks about it. I think it's a great part of his game. I really like it. Brady does it well, too. And I think that's a, probably their biggest similarity. Here's, you know, another example of the whole mo- mobile thing. I mean, come on. Come on. Let's talk about this mobile thing again. Okay, I mean, here we go. Trask right here. They're going to run an option play where he's going to run here. He's going to run here. And, you know, Trask has an option to flip it back. And, I mean, I mean, let's just look here real quick. I mean, again, you look, he has the option to pitch. He doesn't. The defender kind of played it well, but then gets blocked. And I mean, th- this is a 15-yard gain. Uh, I mean, oh, he's so immobile. He can't do anything. He, you know, he, uh. what's this then? You know, I mean, I mean, all I'm telling you is I'm looking at a D1 quarterback running against all D1 SEC defenders, and he got a first down. Is it designed? Yeah, probably. But I mean, this is fine. You don't have to be super mobile. I don't really get that. I mean, what quarterback won the Super Bowl this year? Any guesses? Oh, yeah, Tom Brady. Tom Brady couldn't even do this. So I, I, I'm I, sick of the, the mobile thing, okay? It's just blatantly not true. So that's just, you know, one example of, again, it's it's not an issue. This, this entire... Mobile, it's not an issue. So if people are saying that's the reason why I don't like Trask, that's not why. It's his arm talent and his accuracy at times and decision-making. But which you already got over. Okay, now here's another example of the, the overall pocket presence that I like. So again, they're going to have a guy that rushes. He slides left and hits a guy on the run. And, you know, this play, I'm pretty sure ends up scoring. But So again, slides left, throws right on the money. This play ends up scoring. But again, we don't care because I'm not evaluating Florida. And this is the type of stuff that it seems easy, but not a lot of quarterbacks have the instinct to do this. You know, slowly slide left. You're, 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 I mean, this is kind of on the run here. I mean, you're right. Your feet are not really set. You see a guy running open. He knows where to go with the ball. He knew pretty much the whole time it was a complete mismatch. You know, they got Kadarius Toney on a, on a linebacker, right? I mean, that's what they're, that's what Dan Mullen, their head coach, is looking for. And, I mean, he gets absolutely juked out of his shoes. So this is wide open, and Trask knows that. I mean, he's pretty much, you know, he gives it shot up to the top right. He uses his eyes pretty well here. He knew he was going over the middle. This is where the mismatch was, and hits it in stride. I think ends up scoring. Um, so, yeah, this is going to pretty much be all the plays that I show. Um, and here's the thing. Here's, like, kind of the final takeaway is, again, I could be completely wrong on everything. This could end up being a great pick. I hope it is, because I want to be good. I want to be good. I don't care where you came from. I just want to be good, right? So I want Kyle Trask to do well. And, again, I was bored. I had nothing to do, so I decided to make this video. I think it, you know, whatever. People might get mad, like, whatever. I don't really care. Um, You know, as usual, I say a lot of things on the show. A lot of people get mad. Don't really care. And it's just my opinion, and I hope he, you know, becomes a great NFL quarterback. He's got a lot to work on. And here's the thing, too, is that he's going to be a completely, I believe, a completely different quarterback when he sees the field again. He's not going to play, you know, your boy right here, he's not going to play for at least two more years, learning under Brady and our system. He's going to come out completely different. A lot of things are going to be different about him, I believe. So I think, you know, I, I freaked out at first. I don't think this is maybe the worst pick of all time, but 
I would again I would have preferred a Kelamond or something, but you know, this is who we got. This is who I'm we're rocking with. So, you know, this this is our boy now. This is my boy now. This is all of our boys now. Um so yeah, that's gonna pretty much do it for this episode. Let me know if you guys liked this like kind of film analysis style video because probably want to do more. They just take a long time. It's take me like a lot. This took me a long time to make. So uh yeah, I'll see you guys next time.